Hi and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to interview Fred Schwier. He's the Vice President of Sales with PoolRx. We're going to go over the PoolRx product in detail here. And we're going to go ahead and answer all the frequently asked questions you may have about the product in this podcast. Leslie's Pool Supplies is a proud partner of the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals trusted partners since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy, and solutions and expertise to do it right. So I'm joined by Fred Schwier. He's the Vice President of Sales at PoolRx. How are you doing today, Fred? Doing good, David. How are you doing? Good. So um, let's talk about the PoolRx in a general sense of the product, um, what PoolRx is and what it does for your pool, and why you should be using this product all season long in your pool. Yeah, so PoolRx is really easy to use. Uh, it's it's really what it is, is an EPA-registered algicide. And what uh, we do in the water is we eliminate uh, any type of algae in the water. And, and more importantly, we prevent algae from growing. And by doing that, it's freeing up chlorine to be more available in the water. And so that's allowing you to use less chlorine. Um, the other benefit to it is that there's not a need for a lot of other specialty chemicals. There's there's no need for phosphate removers uh, in the water uh, or clarifiers or, or other algicides. So it's really a, a less is more approach. It's very easy to use. You just pick, pick the right size unit based on the gallons of your pool and, and place it in the pump basket. And the minerals dissolve into the water and they do their job. And as the water passes back over the unit that's in the pump basket, it rejuvenates the minerals to allow them to last for up to six months. Yeah, so um, let's talk about the safety of the product. It's You said it's EPA approved, so that's, that's one of the good aspects. You don't want to be using any product in your pool that's not EPA approved, right? Yeah, that's correct. You know, it's, especially when it comes to algicides or, or things in your water, um, the EPA does uh, very stringent, has, has a stringent safety testing guideline um, that's called uh, FIFRA, F-I-F-R-A. And, and really what that is, it, it's, it's listed on the EPA website, but um, it, it's a very stringent uh, safety testing guideline that you have to, you know, pass and, and, and abide by uh, to be EPA registered. And, and that's what PoolRx is. So okay. it, it's, you know, PoolRx is completely safe when used as directed and, um, you know, safe for your pets, for your family. Um, and additionally, you know, you're using, you know, less chemicals uh, in the water. So it's, it's much safer for you in the long run. And I think that's the key is that you're using less chlorine in the pool, which I think a lot of people don't like using tons of chlorine in their pool anyway. So the one of the main benefits that I think of this product is that you're using a lot less chlorine during the season. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, the that's that's the beauty of it is that, you know, you're getting kind of you're getting a few things that happen, you know, where, where you're, you're algae free and you're able to use less chlorine getting there. So um like I said, we, we prevent all types of algae from growing, even the microalgae you can't see. So even in a clear pool, there's still algae in the water. And that algae is what consumes your chlorine first. Uh, so, you know, algae is the hardest thing to eliminate and prevent in the water, um, you know, compared to bacteria uh, or viruses and that, those kind of things. So uh, with Pool RX, you know, we're going after the hardest, hardest thing to kill and prevent, which is the algae. And by doing that, it's freeing up that chlorine, so you're able to use a lot less chlorine, which uh, is good for you and your family and your pets. Well, let's go into some aspects of um, user error, or not user error, but using the unit correctly, I should say. Um, you want to put it in when your filters, after you clean your filter, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, you know, it's funny that, you know, it, it's so easy to use that people just want to get out of the, you know, get it out of the box, get out of the package and just throw it in there. And, and you know... We do want the, uh, the filter to be clean. So if it's a sand filter, backwash the sand filter, you know, first. If, if it's a cartridge or DE, you, you want to break down those grids and, and clean, you know, and wash them and, and put your filter back together. And then at that point, go ahead and place it in the, in the, in the pump basket or the skimmer, uh, which is important. And then, um, you know, you want to make sure that your pump is running after you put it in. The longer it runs after you put this in, the better. But we do require at least three to four hours of pump run time 
after installation. And the reason for that uh, is a couple of reasons, but the, the main thing is that inside the unit is an alloy cylinder and it's packed with our mineral formulation. It's a granular mineral formulation. And once it starts to you know, hits the water, it's gonna start dissolving. And we want those minerals to dissolve uh, through the filter and into solution in the water. That's why it's important to have a clean filter because if the filter's dirty, that granular mineral, mineral gets caught up on the filter and doesn't dissolve through. Uh, and then, you know, your filter pressure goes up and then you either clean or backwash your filter after you put it in and you lose all the mineral down the drain. And you, then you call us up and say, hey, this didn't work. What happened? Well, mm -hmm. you, you lost all the mineral down the drain from not starting with a clean filter in the first place. Um, and then the second reason why you want those that pump to run afterwards is that if you don't run, turn your pump on, you the minerals start dissolving in the bottom of the basket. So say you throw the, the product in there at eight o'clock in the morning, but your pump doesn't turn on until eight o'clock at night. So it's been sitting in the pool in the water, you know, for 12 hours and all that mineral, that granular mineral dissolves in the bottom of the basket in this big concentration of mineral. And then if the, the pump turns on at eight o'clock at night, full blast, it blows all that mineral through the system all at once. And it blows out in the pool in this big plume of blue mineral. And, you know, it doesn't, it didn't have time to dissolve properly. So you may see it settle to the bottom or stick to your scale. Uh, and, and we don't want that. Um, it's, it's, there's an easy fix for that, but, you know, uh, to avoid that, you know, just make sure your pump has at least three or four hours after you put it in. Uh, FYI, the fix for the for that, if, if you don't turn the pump on and it blows all that mineral in at one time and you see this blue kind of coloring on your on your surface, um, what that is, is just the granular undissolved mineral. And it's, you know, it's just stuck to the scale or, uh, or the porous areas on your surface. And. Uh, a product um, that we recommend is a phosphonic acid. Um, one of the best makers of that product is Jack's Magic. Jack's Blue Stuff is a phosphonic acid that will just dissolve that that mineral into solution in the water, and um, you'll be good to go at that point. It's a safe product to use. It doesn't, um, you know, you can still swim in the pool with it, um, and it, it's very easy to use, and it, and it works really good if if you do you know, mess it up and not, not turn your pump on. Yeah. So it to doesn't... prevent that, of course, you just want to make sure you use it correctly, which is put it in and make sure the pump's running. Absolutely. And it, you know, again, it's not, um, you know, it, it, it sounds, it sounds like a scary and thing that it happens. It, it happens very, you know, it's, it doesn't happen very often. Even if you don't turn on your pump, you know, it, for the 90% of the time, it's, it's not going to have that issue, but just to avoid that, I like to make sure that, you know, people understand that's why we, tell them to run your pump out you know mm -hmm. for at least three or four hours afterwards that that's the reason why um and again it's few and far between even if you don't remember to run your pump after you put it in but i'd like to preface that just so you have a, a great experience yeah and also one thing that i like doing with the unit i don't like putting them in a the skimmer basket i like putting them in the pump basket because what i find happens with the customers on my route is they'll think that as some kind of weird, I don't know what they think it is. Sometimes they think it's a weird object that got in their pump. It's just kind of funny. And they throw right. it away in the trash and you can't do that either, right? That's correct. Yeah. The, the alloy uh, cylinder inside that unit is, is really a key part to our product. And not only is our mineral formulation unique and uniquely chelated, so it's very safe to use and won't, won't stain your pool. But um, the way that the minerals react with the alloy is what's, re is what's allowing those minerals to last for up to six months. So you definitely, the more flow over the unit, the better, because um, as, the, as the water with the mineral and it passes over that, that unit, there's a reaction there that keep those minerals active for up to six months. So that what is very you, important. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. And yeah. uh, what if your pool has like, I, I've had this experience before where I do a, a couple of pools with St. Augustine grass and it goes right through the skimmer basket into the pump and it really clogs up that unit. What's the best solution for that? Yeah, that's, you know, we, we hear that sometimes in pine, you know, pine needles, that kind of stuff. Um, if you need to, you know, the, the more flow over the unit, the better. Um, you know, if, if you can, you know, you can use a, a hose to try and, you know, blow some of that out of there. If that doesn't work and you really have a, a real clogged up uh, unit, then uh, you can actually just crack that plastic shell off there if necessary and, and just keep the alloy cylinder in there. Okay. Um, which will help. But uh, the unit's designed, you know, the plastic shell is, is designed to, to keep, um, you know, to, to allow flow to go over that unit. So the more flow, the better. Okay. Uh, but in, in the worst case scenario, you can crack that shell off and just leave it in there. But um, we, we would recommend that, you know, do the best you can by, um, you know, leaving it on. 
Yeah, and that's a rare occurrence. I, I've only had it happen a couple times, but I just wanted to throw that yeah. out there in case there's someone out there that purchases one and they have that issue, that the solution is pretty easy. Um, another thing that I also notice people that are doing when they get the pool are because they, they still use their algaecite in the pool, and that's definitely not, not something you need to do, right? That's correct, yeah. There's there's no need. We are your algaecite, so you know we're, we're the you know, the strongest, most effective, you know, algaecide around. So yeah, there's no need for other, other algaecide products. Um, you know, again, if, if you are clearing up a green pool, you can do that with pool RX. Uh, and we have basic directions, you know, uh, to do that. Um, uh, so yeah, you, you, if, if you want to clear up a pool, you can use the pool RX to clear your pool up and it'll keep you clear. Uh, just keep in mind that the minerals do get used up from killing algae backwashing, splash out, and filter cleans. So the more those factors happen, the shorter the lifespan of the minerals. So if you clear up a green pool with Pool RX, you may notice that the, you're not getting six months out of the use of the minerals because some of those minerals got used up by getting you clear. So at some point, you, you may need to add a booster. And the booster is the same mineral that's inside the blue unit. It handles 7,520,000 7, gallons. And all you would have to do is uh, clean your filter and then pour the contents of the booster into the skimmer or the pump basket. And again, make sure your pump's running after you pour it in. And then those minerals dissolve into solution. It raises the mineral content up in the water. And uh, as that water flows over that original unit, it rejuvenates the, the booster minerals to last up to six more months. So um, again, you know, no need for other algicides uh, when using Pool RX uh, before or after. Um, if you ever notice your chlorine demand going up uh, or cloudy water or any hint of algae um, after you've used a pool RX unit, all you need to view is, is do is add a booster. Uh, now, keep in mind, David, you know, as you know, that the, the alloy cylinder inside the unit is only effective for one year in the water. After a year, it gets scaled and corroded and it loses its connectivity with the minerals. So every year we say start with a new unit and if necessary at the end of the season or when you need it, uh, use a booster. Um, and in the following year, uh, again, start with a new unit and then if necessary, use a booster. For most, for most parts of the country, you're, you're not even going to need the booster. Um, so only use the booster if necessary. Uh, it's not mm -hmm. something that it's, it's mandatory. Yeah. And I pretty rarely use the booster. I think I've purchased maybe two or three a season. Um, the unit in my area lasts pretty much the whole season. Yep, that's that's uh, that's a testament to the product. So you know we're we're proud of that. It does you know it, it lasts you know it gives you that longevity, uh, algae-free water using less chemicals. But it's just good to know you you have that booster available to you just in case. Not only for you know really tough condition pools, but also for larger bodies of water. So for a blue unit, um, you know that handles up to twenty thousand gallons. The black unit handles up to thirty. Um, if you had a forty thousand gallon pool, you could go with a blue unit and a booster. Um, and that, that would get you to 40,000 for, for a 50,000 gallon pool, you can go a black unit and a booster. So that just gives you an idea that you can kind of mix and match as needed to get you to the right amount of mineral in the water for the gallons. And again, the, you know, the sizing charts on our website and available. Um, but it's, it's pretty, pretty standard, uh, pretty basic. As long as you have the, enough mineral in the water based on the gallons, you'll, the chemistry will work and it'll work as advertised. Why don't we go over some of the chemicals you shouldn't use with the Pool RX? I know that Cal Hypo is one of them that you don't want to use. Uh, yeah, so why don't you, you touch you on can, the other ones? Yeah, you can use Cal Hypo with Pool RX, but you just want to make sure you dissolve the Cal Hypo into a, into a, a bucket of water before pouring it in the pool. The reason for that is Cal Hypo, um, if you just pour the Cal Hypo directly in and it's in that granular form, uh, the minerals make chlorine super active and available, and Cal Hypo is already a very active shock. And uh, with that particular type of, of Cal Hypo shock, uh, if you don't dissolve it, uh, in some cases, if you just pour it in and that granular settles to the bottom, it can instantly oxidize when it hits the surface. And you'll see these little black dots where all the Cal Hypo granular is. Again, that's going to go away in a couple of weeks, um, but it's so avoidable if, if you just you know, take that extra step and just dissolve it first and dilute it and then pour it in slowly around the, you know, the deep end or something. Uh, but as far as any other chlorine, there's, you know, you can, you can use anything else um, with Pool RX, um, you know, trichlor, dichlor, liquid, um, all good. Um, the, the products uh, that you wouldn't use with Pool RX would be any, any copper-based products. You don't want to add, you know, we're using the right amount of, of copper uh, and our minerals are uniquely chelated. So uh, you'll be safe there. Um, 
as far as you don't want to use sodium bromide um, or bromine uh, or bigonide products. So those are the three that you wouldn't want to use with PoolRx. But uh, as far as anything else out there, um, you can use it with PoolRx if you like. Um, but ultimately, PoolRx is, is really a less is more approach. So it's, it's PoolRx, low residual chlorine, and balanced water. And that's all you're really going to need. Um, if, if you're one of those folks that love to add stuff into your pool, you know, you be my guest, just don't add, you know, the, the, the four things we talked about, which was sodium bromide, bromine, bigonides, uh, or other copper based products. Mm-hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Um, and also the, um, another aspect is the saltwater pool. I really like using them in my saltwater pools on my route because then I could turn down the salt production to a minimum amount. And thereby, for the customer, their salt cells are going to last a lot longer because, as you know, the salt cells are based on, are rated on hour usage, and most are off of a 10,000 hour usage. And so, if you can reduce the uh, production from 100% to 50%, you're taking that salt cell that normally would be a three or four year salt cell and bring it, bringing it up to a, a seven or eight year salt cell. As far yeah, as that's, that's correct. That, that's that's a great great point, David. And that that's um, again, we're we're real proud of our product. And you know, with with salt pools, um, number one is that you know our unique chelation is re- it really protects our minerals at a molecular level. So there's no fallout or staining issues with our product, and and that's important, especially in in the in a salt pool which has a very high pH environment. You know, the higher the pH, the more it wants to push push things out of the water and, and with our chelation it, it's it doesn't affect us so number one it's safe to use number two like you mentioned you can turn down that salt generator by about 50 percent the other thing that um, doesn't get brought up much is is there's some zinc in our product and that's a natural descaler um, so we're not going to sell this as a, sca- a descaling product but what the, the fact is that the zinc will prevent the scale from attaching to the salt cell as easily so over time, you're not going to have to clean the salt cell as frequently. So less cleaning of the salt cell and less generation is going to prolong the life of that equipment. Uh, and then also, um, you know, if you're not having to create as much high pH chlorine, you're not going to have to put as much acid in the balance of that pH, which is also a benefit to not only the, the, the bathers, but uh, also the equipment. Yeah, so, I think that's oh, one oh, aspect of the salt pool, that the pH is always rising in there. So if you, if you can lower the production of it, you're going to eliminate that high pH. Yeah, you're you're gonna you're gonna have to be able to use less acid to balance it, which which will definitely you know saves you money as well. Hey, David, one more note on uh, the salt pools. Um, again, you know we hit on all the benefits of Pool RX uh, in a salt pool, and you know obviously less generation, uh, less cleaning of the salt cell. Uh, both those things are going to prolong the life of the equipment, uh, and also by producing less high pH chlorine, you're going to be able to use less acid to balance the pH. So those are all benefits. Um, and I've also been very clear uh, over this, these last few uh, podcasts um, that, you know, with Pool RX, we're not worried about phosphates in the water. Um, and, and that's something that you no longer need, need to worry about when you're using Pool RX as directed, because obviously, uh, you know, we are eliminating and preventing the algae. So phosphates are just food for algae and phosphates don't consume chlorine. So it won't matter how high your phosphates get when using Pool RX, you'll be algae free and you'll be your chlorine is going to be more available. Now, again, when it comes to the salt pools, uh, there is a reason to reduce phosphates. Um, there's been some research, and it's somewhat theoretical, but uh, there, it has been um, printed out there in different uh, articles that phosphates uh, do interfere with salt chlorine production. Uh, what's been said is that phosphates actually uh, coat the cell, and that um, interferes with the electrolysis. So you're not producing uh, as efficiently as you could if phosphates were not present. So as much as I've been hitting, banging on phosphates and the, and the not necessary to reduce them, in the salt pool, I absolutely understand reducing phosphates. It's going to uh, allow your salt generator to run more efficiently, um, and that's going to, to help you in the long run. Um, and again, with, with Pool RX, uh, it, it will also obviously help um, because we can turn down that generator by typically 50%, uh, so your chlorine is more available. But I uh, just wanted to make sure I gave phosphate uh, remover companies their due and uh, you know, let, you, let you know that you know, in, in a salt chlorine pool, we absolutely understand the reduction of phosphates. It makes complete sense. Um, 
if if the research is correct that uh, they are interfering with the salt chlorine production. So I want to make sure we we're on the same page on that one. Everyone understood that. Mm. But uh, you know, the, the other benefit that it goes kind of un, unnoticed or unheard is that it's just like your insurance policy. I mean, the minerals are always working in the water. No matter what your bather load is, you know, if you have a big party and, and it, you know, all your all your chlorine gets sucked up or if, you know, weather conditions, um, you know, the fluctuations in, in bather load and, and weather conditions will definitely affect, you know, how much chlorine stays in your pool. And with Pool RX, no matter what, you know, your, you know, worst case scenario, you know, over time, if there's no chlorine, yeah, it's going to start getting cloudy. But all you got to do is get a little chlorine in the water. Uh, and, and you'll be back to, you know, super clear. Uh, the nice thing is even with zero chlorine, you're not going to get algae. So you're not going to play that roller coaster ride, you know, that so many people do without the product of getting the pool clear. And then it goes green again and then getting the pool clear and, and back and forth. So um, it's a great insurance policy and kind of your your baseline to, to have, um, you know, algae free water with with less chemicals. Yeah, I think it's great. I, I really agree with that 100%. I've had pools where they had parties, heated the pool up when I wasn't aware of it. And I went to the pool and it was zeroed out, but no algae, the water was actually still pretty clear. So um, I can really vouch for that aspect of it. Um, just switching gears a little bit. What about those naysayers who say it's a copper product, that you shouldn't use it in your pool because it's going to add um, copper to your pool and it could stain your pool. Um, you talked sure. about it being uh Chelated, that's the word, right, that you use? Yeah, you know, chelated, chelated. Is, 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 uh, is a big part of our success. Um, you know, and, and the other part of that, David, you know, to your point, you know, we're, we're putting the right amount in uh, based on the gallons of the pool, number one. So we have different sizes, and, and there's a wide range for air there, but we're putting the right in, a right amount of mineral in at the right time. Uh, and the mineral does get used up over time from killing and preventing algae, and it gets filtered out. So it never gets to a saturation point in the water. You know, we've been around since 1994 and people have been using us every year since 1994. And, you know, what that says to you is that, look, the minerals do their job um, and they, and over time they get used up and filtered out. So every time you clean your filter, you're, the minerals leaving the water and then you're able to start with more. Um, so you're never getting to a, a saturation point, um, wh which is important. Um, the, and, and again, the chelation is, is unique to us. Our minerals are so chelated that you can't even test for them accurately or consistently in the water. So this is important, especially for the do-it-yourselfers out there that, you know, go, go to a, a Leslie's or, or go to, you know, a, a pool store to get their water tested. Um, when you, if, you're, if you're worried about copper in your water, you have old copper plumbing or an old copper heat exchange that leaches copper in. Um, you know, you likely don't have any algae problems in the first place, but you would want to test for copper first if you think you have those issues. Um, not real common, but they exist, you know, especially with well water um, in certain parts of the country um, or real old, old, old pools that uh, have old copper plumbing. So test for copper first. If you're at 0 0.02 parts per million, which is the lowest level on a, on a test kit or test strip reagent liquid, um, you, you're safe to use Pool RX. If you're above 0.02, you're, you're going to want to address that first before using Pool RX. Because once you add Pool RX to the water, David, uh, as, as you know, your copper reading is not going to be accurate. So don't if, don't go and get freaked out if it's at zero because you added Pool RX. And if it's at zero, oh, that means the Pool RX isn't in the water. It didn't work. That's not true. It's so chelated that the, the, test, the test can't see through the chelation. Or if you see it, it's at you know two parts per million copper. Don't don't fret. Don't don't worry about that because it's not accurate. It's the chelation even in these new spin lab tests, these really strong uh, liquid reagent kits. It's not going to be accurate or consistent, so you can't rely on that copper test reading. So what you do is you say, okay, well if I'm using the right amount at the right time, I'm good to go. And and again. The real question is, well, how do I know when to add more mineral to the water? If I can't test for it, when do I? When should I add a booster? Um, and again, the three basic ways are, you know, six. If it's been six months and you've done another filter clean, you know, you're good to go. Uh, before that, if you're noticing your chlorine demand going up, it means that the microalgae is able to grow again. So that mineral has been used up in the water. 
And now that the algae is able to, the, the microalgae is able to grow, your chlorine is getting consumed faster. So that's the first thing you're going to notice. The second thing you would notice would be cloudy water, meaning that, hey, my, I got balanced water. Everything's in good shape, but, you know, it's just not looking good. It's dull. It's cloudy. It's not looking good. That would be your second noticeable sign. Your third noticeable sign would be any hint of algae, a little mustard spot on the wall, a little tinge of green. At that point, you know, man, I don't, I don't have enough mineral in the water. And that's when you would be able to add a booster. Um, and you just, you know, add the booster as directed. And, and what that will do is it'll raise your mineral content. It'll clear up your water, it'll eliminate the algae, freeze up your chlorine. And then as that booster mineral passes over the original unit, uh, you're, you're good to go again for another six months. And then obviously every year you have to start with a new unit. Um, so begin the season, start with a new unit. And if necessary, add the booster if necessary. And I think um, from my experience, about 90% of the pools on my route, I don't have to worry about it. It lasts the whole season. Um, the ones that I think I noticed where they do need a booster is if I started with the pool not being in 100% shape, it has algae, uh, and maybe it had been cloudy, not running correctly. Those are the ones where I kind of will add a booster because it, the minerals, again, get used up more. I think um, we can touch yeah, also and, on the fact that yeah, you don't add the booster until you need to, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, it just it just goes by time, right? So, you know, you wouldn't add the yeah. booster right up, right away. You, you don't want to overdose the pool. You want to, you know, use the right amount based on the gallons. And then if necessary down the road, you can add additional minerals mm -hmm. to the water. Yeah. And, and, and we can, uh, you know, one of the things that I'd like to touch on too is the fact that um, the cost of the actual Pool RX unit is going to be offset um, by not using the phosphate removers, the enzymes, the algicides, not using a lot of tablets in the pool or adding a lot of shock or chlorine to the pool. So the initial cost of the unit, in my opinion, if you're a do-it-yourself homeowner and you're thinking of getting the Pool RX and you see the price point and you're wondering, should I pay the money for it? Um, the other aspects of the product is that it'll actually save you money by not using as much of the other products you would put in your pool. Yeah, that, that's that's a big part of it. You know, just just on the cost savings of, of the chlorine is going to it's going to end up paying for itself over a season easily. But, you know, all those other all those other products you mentioned, absolutely. Um, and not not to mention just just the time and effort, you know, uh, there's just, you know, really takes away the headaches. We, we really stand behind the product. We believe in the product. We, we really enjoy helping people um, and making, you know, pool service and, and owning a pool and do it yourself, you know, just a, a better experience. Um, so yeah, I'm, we're, we're real proud of it and we, and you know, we're really here to help you and, and to make, you know, make it as easy as possible for you. So, yeah. So um, I really appreciate your time today going over all this and the different aspects of the product. Oh, it was my pleasure, David. I, I really enjoy it. And I, I really, uh, love all the positive feedback and, and, um, it just, it feels good to help people and, and, and to really simplify things for, for pool owners. Yeah, well, I appreciate your time, Fred. Thanks, David. Appreciate you. And I also recorded three more parts of this podcast with Fred. I'm going to go over the purple dusting and also using Pool RX in a green pool in another episode. And then I'm going to spend time in two separate episodes talking about the Pool RX use for your pool service business. And I'll cover some details about selling the Pool RX to your customers and how it can really enhance your pool service business. So definitely check those episodes out. Right after this episode, you'll find the other three episodes in succession. You can also find the videos that I filmed on a Polar X product on my website, swimmingprolearning.com. Just go ahead and go to the tab and find, scroll down and find the Polar X product. And you can see the videos that I filmed on the product also. And if you do pool service for a living and you want to enhance your business or you're just starting out, check out my coaching program at poolguycoaching.com. There's a lot of great resources there also, and you can connect with me directly one-on-one -on -one through the coaching program. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals' trusted partner since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy and solutions and expertise to do it right.